Welcome to the special edition of Neurology News Network. I'm Marco Meglio. Please excuse our appearance this week as a majority of the U.S. workforce, including the Neurology Live team, moves to working remote as we come together to help reduce the spread of the novel coronavirus. First up, data from a preclinical study of mouse models presented at the 2021 American Society of Gene and Cell Therapy annual meeting showed that SCAAV9 gene therapy could provide a meaningful benefit to patients with SLC13A5 deficiency. SLC13A5 deficiency, an autosomal recessive disorder, is due to mutations in the SLC13A5 gene, which codes for a plasma membrane sodium-dependent citrate transporter. There are currently no treatments available that target the underlying cause of the disease. Both knockout mice and wild-type litter mates were treated with the gene therapy through IT delivery or ICM delivery at 10 to 12 weeks of age and were monitored for weight and survival. At one month post-treatment and beyond, knockout mice treated with the gene therapy had significantly decreased plasma citrate levels it compared to knockout mice treated with vehicle, which, sustain, which showed sustained high citrate levels. Next up, a recently published study's findings suggest that the improvements in disease-modifying therapeutics and management standards have led to the reduction of the risk of persistent disability for individuals with pediatric onset multiple sclerosis by 50 to 70%. The results imply that an increase in approved DMTs prior to the age of 18 and continuous upgrades to the management tactics can further advance prognosis for this patient population. In a cohort of more than 3,100 patients with pediatric onset disease, the cumulative risk of reaching disability milestones decreased gradually over time for expanded disability status skill scores of both 4.0, implying significant disability but self-sufficiency and an ability to be up and about for about 12 hours per day, and 6.0, implying the requirement of a walking aid such as a cane or crutch. Lastly, a new multi-center randomized phase 3 study will assess the effects of experimental drug recumbent factor VIIA or RFVIIA on intracerebral hemorrhage. The study, recumbent factor VIIA, for acute hemorrhagic stroke administered at earliest time, also called FASTEST, is funded by the National Institutes of Health and will be conducted at North Shore University Hospital by Northwell Health's Institute for Neurology and Neurosurgery and the Feinstein Institutes for Medical Research. The study will enroll adults between the ages of 18 and 80 years old with intracerebral hemorrhage, and RFVIIA will be administered within two hours of stroke onset. Patients may be enrolled without consent if unconscious, and a family member or other representative is not readily available as ICH requires immediate treatment. Every attempt will be made to locate family to give consent. For more direct access to expert insight, head to neurologylive.com. This has been Neurology News Network. Thanks for watching.